2021 NFL Draft Propapalooza. It's going to be over 0.5 running backs taken in round one. Um, you're looking at the odds at minus 225. I think really when you break it down and start looking at it, and you can even refer back to last year when you had Clyde edwards Teller going, I think Najee Harris and, and ATN are, are both ranked higher than what most people would have had Clyde edwards Teller last year. And I said, so you start looking at that and, and even some of the scouting takes it, what you have on Najee Harris and how he fits in today's game is a bigger back that's, that's smooth and fluid catching the ball. Uh, I think there's a very good chance you have these two guys as good bets of one of them going in uh, in the first round. With an outside shot with, with Javante Williams, a lot of people in the scouting community tend to like him. I like the play to go ahead and bet on at least one running back getting taken here in the first round. This is a 20 to one long shot, but I'm going with uh, the Cardinals drafting Jalen Waddell. And this is sort of betting on the draft being chaotic. So I'm betting on variance here. Um, I think the fun's really going to start when we get to the Falcons, Bengals, Dolphins portion of the draft. And, you know, if, if we get a curveball there, I think it's going to make the range of outcomes for the Lions even wider. I'm um, including the possibility that the Lions trade down. So um, I, I don't, I, I think the Lions are probably the most likely spot for Waddle to go, but. I mean, it's not too crazy to see him slip to 16. I, I think that's certainly his floor. But I've been seeing some rumors that the Cardinals, Cardinals love Waddle and they're willing to trade up. So, you know, they're potentially a trade up candidate to either the Lions or the Giants. The most recent mock by Daniel Jeremiah has the Cardinals getting Waddle at 16. And Peter Schrager's recent mock has them trading up to seven to take Waddle. So I think just the more sharper recent mocks have the Cardinals taking Waddle. So I'm going to take them here at 20 to one. I think, you know, this should be closer to 13 to one. Uh, I obviously don't think it's going to happen, but I'm taking the value here at 20 to one. Uh, I'm going under one and a half tight ends in the first round. Uh, Kyle Pitts obviously will go top 10, probably top five, but I don't really see another tight end going until the mid second round at the earliest. So minus 550. Uh, I think those odds are, you know, even though they're juiced up, I think they're way too low. Um, I would bet him to about minus 900 or so. Under two and a half Pac-12 players in round one. It is plus 100 at some books. This number should be minus 400, minus 500. There are two Pac-12 guys who are locked in, Panay Sewell and Elijah Vera Tucker. You know, both of those guys, I think, go in the top half of round one. But after them, it is very thin. Edge rusher. Joe Tryon out of Washington, he has a shot, but he's in only maybe 10% of the sharp mocks that I've seen. So I think there might be five other edges ahead of him in this class. Out of all the props I see right now, this one might be the one that provides the most value. Yeah, the, the next one that I like is actually uh, had a little bit of movement initially with that plus 105. Now it's up to plus 120, but it's the over six and a half on Trey Lance. When you start listening to some of the guys that are tuned in and Mike Lombardi, who, you know, was a GM, he's tuned in with, with some of the guys there. You know, he talks about Trey Lance being a year away from being a year away. You know, drafting a quarterback that high in the top five who's a year away from being a year away, you're talking, you know, sitting probably two years. And then I think you really start looking at, at that six position and our team's going to trade up to, to six to get Lance. And if Lance doesn't go at six, you have, you know, seven, eight, nine, where seven and eight could be a trade up position to either Carolina or Detroit. And then you're really looking at Denver there at nine being the, the pick that I would probably project right now to be the one taking uh, Trey Lance. This one, Devontae Smith going to the Eagles at plus 450. Um, you know, this is sort of a hedge on my extreme Waddle bet. You know, if the Lions or Giants take Waddle, um, I think that that would make it even more likely that the Eagles take Devonta Smith here. Rashad Bateman, uh, I'm going with under 26 and a half for his draft spot. So that means get, getting taken higher at plus 110. So it's better than plus money. Um, I think it's. I think this is this prop is relatively on point, um, but I like the plus money for him to go under. I think you see a bunch of teams in the twenties that um, could take a wide receiver, and, and I think he'll be the fourth guy. I'm going Trayvon Morig as the number one safety 
in the draft. It's minus 400 at bet MGM. So again, it, it's not sexy to lay this much juice, but this line should be minus 900, minus 1,000. Uh, Morig, you know, of course, coming from the great school of TCU. Uh, he won the Thorpe Award last year as the nation's top defensive back, and there's no one close to him at safety in this class. Uh, Morig should go in the 20s or 30s. The two guys who might challenge him, Richie Grant and Javon Holland, they're likely go in the 40s and 50s. And not one mock have I seen a safety drafted ahead of Morig. And to get him at minus 400, I think it's such fantastic value. Again, no one wants to lay that much juice, but it's totally worth it for a guy who really is this head and shoulders above everyone else at the position.